Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's edition of How I Choose to Live My Life. My name is Leslie Donaldson with ITR Polygraph. Um, it's a bit of a hard day for me today. I want to just uh, recognize that I lost a very dear friend of mine today. So I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit, I think I'm a bit off. I'm a bit, I'm a bit off and, um, and I'm a bit sad. Yesterday was Thursday and I should have up uploaded this video series yesterday. It was my sister's birthday and it was a very happy day. Today's Friday, we're uploading it today, but I got very sad news today that one of my very, 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 very dear friends um, passed away of, of cancer and because of COVID and everything, I can't go to the, I couldn't go to see her before she passed away and I can't go to the service. So that's weighing a bit heavy on my heart today. So I just really want to recognize that, but um, I'm really happy also this is my personal series. I have always stated that I'm a woman of faith and so was my dear friend Karen and her last text to me said that she's ready, she's prepared and she went to be with the Lord and um, so please know that that's a bit on my heart today and also if you've been following along and if you haven't been following along you sure can please go to our corporate uh, website itrpolygraph.com on that website there is a YouTube link and it's lit up in red like the YouTube um, button. So just hit that and it'll take you to YouTube. Otherwise, just go please directly to YouTube um, under ITR Polygraph, hit videos or playlists and our videos come up. This series is now in a playlist and uh, you can catch up and, and uh, come along with us because this is instead of me writing a book. So each week we pick up where we left off. So last Thursday, Sadly, my mother had passed. It was the death of our family matriarch, is what I called it. Because it was, it was shocking, it was shocking. And what happened after that, equally shocking. And I'm gonna to get to that. I wanna first off, start off by paying absolute respect to my mom and to my dad. If you don't know anything about my mom and dad, Sandy and Linda Bibby, um, or myself, Leslie Donaldson. Sadly, some of the things that happened after that were made very, very, very public. It was written in the newspaper um, across Canada. I was in Alberta, and my cousin in Ontario tells me that what happened to my family was in the newspaper. It was on the news. It was everywhere. And... Um, I want to share today who my mom was and who my dad was. This is written by my dad in his handwriting. I found it the other day when I was, I, I had read some other um, keepsakes that my dad had made and <clears throat> what we had done over the years with my mom and I had shared some of those things with you in, in previous episodes. So today, I don't want anybody to mistake who my mom was and who my dad was, who they were when they were alive. So bear with me and I hope you enjoy hearing it. And I wonder if maybe your mom and dad have beautiful letters. This may be a eulogy, but it's a beautiful love letter is how I see it. It's a love letter. It says Linda, my wife, lover, and best friend for 40 years. What does one say? How can I do her justice in a few short minutes? When we met, she was 17. She married me at 18 on her 18th birthday. I drove her to Buffalo to have her first legal drink. Too many pink ladies later, I had to put the roof down on my MGB for the drive home in an effort to sober her up before presenting her back to her mother. I, uh, I have a real problem with trying to keep this short. Linda did so many, so much in her short life, whether it was work or family or socially related, 
she made friends wherever she was. How? Because she was genuinely concerned and involved. Linda had to make homes for us as my jobs dictated. When I proposed to her, I said something that one could not say today. I told her, work will always come first, but if you stick with me, you will, you will wear diamonds. She did stick with me through thick and thin, and she did wear diamonds. She took me at face value and helped us make it through. Along the way, we had two great kids, Laura and Leslie, and they brought her immeasurable joy by giving her six wonderful grandchildren, Amanda, Alex, Paige, Sierra, and twins, Juliet and Olivia. Linda was not only a beautiful lady, she was always graceful, bold, courageous, and charming, and at the same time, strong-willed and entrepreneurial. She started companies that sold millions of labels for Gainer's Meats, cleaned for bachelor's apartments, put up lawn greeting cards in the middle of the night, and won and a, and a company that sold tons and tons of fish to Edmonton wholesalers. One of her pride and joys was Mums and Little Uns, the first baby clothes and furniture consignment store on the south side of Edmonton. It was still going today. That was in 2004. I, maybe it's still going today. At one time, she had over a thousand infant car seats out on rental. We traveled the world on business and for fun. She became scared of flying, but she fixed that by learning to fly. She soloed several times, but despite all our travels, she never learned to pack light. A simple two-day weekend required a full-size suitcase and the largest allowable carry-on just for her. I am sure many of you remember the movie Out of Africa. It's a very long time ago. Early in the movie, the heroine is seen walking away from the train station, followed by six or seven parties carrying her luggage. Linda was that lady. When she went to Africa to meet my father for the first time, For a, it was going to be for a four-week trip. We were robbed of all six suitcases on day two in Portugal. The ensuing insurance claim is still the talk of the industry. Does anyone really pack 15 pairs of shoes, 36 complete sets of underwear, and a dozen face cloths? And what's with the kettle? I love this. My Linda, an incredible lady and a great and true friend to many people. A woman I adored, who in turn adored me, her family, and especially her grandchildren. In her last few days, she struggled to show a smile. Whenever any of the children cuddled up close to her, she'd smile. We are all going to miss her terribly, the little ones even more so, because they don't understand where her flight to heaven has really taken her. Thank you for that. It goes on to ask a few of her friends to speak on her behalf, and they did. And this was my dad's tribute to my mom. My life was wonderful with my mom and dad. They were amazing people to so many. I often refer to my life as Camelot. And so when my mom passed away and my dad was alone, that broke my heart because my mom passed away very young. 
my dad was still very young. I would go to, to church and it would be on my heart that my dad, my dad should have a partner. He shouldn't be alone and he shouldn't be by himself. He has a lot of love, life to live and a lot of love to give and everything. And so one day I let my dad know that, you know, um, dad, it's okay to find somebody new and to start a new relationship that I, I accept that. You were married this whole time. It's not as if you had had a divorce or di divorced my mom or anything like that and went to choose somebody else. That's not what happened. By default, really, he lost his partner and he's alone. And he should have somebody else in his life to, lo to live life with him. And to be with us and be with our kids, we were all missing my mom and their nana and a partner for my dad. But I want to be real clear right now. You. There are many people right now who can um, relate to what I'm going to say. Please stick close to your parents. Stick even closer to the parent who is alone if they've lost one of the spouses. Because you never know who's going to come out and be their new partner. Who are they? What is their agenda? Can they be trusted? If, you, if there's a lot of money to gain or anything like that, you need to be careful. But here's also the thing. Women can be incredibly manipulative. I'm sorry, but I'm saying it. Hell has no fury like a woman scorned. So, there's a bit of an issue that happens next time. Who did my dad choose? Who was she? What happened? Like I said last time, I really hope this doesn't happen to you. Pay attention to your parents. They're, they're vulnerable. Take good care of them. Tune in next time and we're going to talk more about it. Thank you very much. Bye now.